Thank you, Father. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Honor and glory. God is in the midst of her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you, Lord, for your help this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Welcome, everyone, this morning. Well, is a song I love to play, but of course I do not have the permission to play that song on Facebook, so we just have to, you know, uh, cut it off. Welcome everybody this morning. Join, thank you for joining us this morning. Want to believe God for a glorious day. Want to believe God once again for a glorious, uh, a manifest presence of God this morning. Even as we connect and join our hearts together with the Spirit of the Lord this morning. I believe the Lord, amen, is at work in our life. I believe the Lord is doing great things in our day, in our time, where we need to constantly, amen, tune our heart and to listen to what the Spirit of the Lord, of course, is, is saying to us. These are glorious days. These are great days. We are beginning to find and discover the path and the pattern of how to live life, how to build, how to walk, how to engage in these days of the end. And we want to thank God this morning once again for granting us the privilege to be alive. It indeed is a privilege to be alive. And we bless him for that uh, uh, mercy as extended to us. So this morning, as we bring ourselves together and gather our hearts wherever we are connecting from this morning, it's an honor and a great privilege to lead you this morning before the throne of God. Father, this day we come with our hearts, our soul, body, mind. We yield ourselves to you, Father. We proclaim in this third day of the, of the new month of July, we have gathered our soul before you this morning and we have come to present this living offering, this living sacrifice before your altar. Yes, Father, this is our desire this morning, that before we do anything, that we yield ourselves, that we present our lives to you, God, as a living sacrifice, holy, holy and acceptable unto you this morning we thank you this morning that everything oh god that is not of you every idea every inclination every desire every agenda that is not of you as we lay on the altar may your fire oh god burn those things oh god may it become things that you have harvested oh god that all that we will have and present this morning as as life will be that to which you have approved so this morning once again we ask you lord to walk in our lives we ask you to do your work in our soul in our minds our faculty yes our desires every aspect of our being our aspirations oh god the inher the inheritance of fear and doubt oh god yes father everything that uh, that you have not designed for our life that we have come to accept and believe oh god that is part of our life we let go of them this morning as we come before you father we ask May the spirit of your son walk in our life. May truth continue to engage us. May we not be afraid and be and be and be and be 
shy, oh God, yes, to stand before you naked. Yes, Father. You said, Adam, where are you? It is for him to see where he, where, he, where he is and to identify his state and his location in sin so that you can help him. This morning, we locate where we are. We, we see where we are, oh God. We are, not, we are not blind, oh God. We refuse to walk, yes, in blindness regarding our state, oh God. The more you engage us, the more we are able to see our filthy, our weak, wickedness, our weakness, our doubt, oh God. And as we see those things, we yield them to you. We say, Lord, we cannot handle these things. We yield them to you. As we engage the days of the end, as we come into a day where uh, evil has, has, has been turned to something that works with institutions, as we enter into seasons where men are turning truth to evil and evil for good. Father, we pray that you will continue to walk within the structures of our life, oh God. That this environment that you have this de defined and desire to be your garden, that once again, oh God, that the new man, the new Adam, oh God, will find expression in it. So, we pray this morning, help us to see the contention for the day. Help us to see that the contention for the day is our soul. That there is an enemy, our soul. Like you said uh, regarding Cain, you said, sin lieth at your door. You've got to master. You've got to master how to deal with it so it won't gain entry. So we thank you this morning that as we come before you, we declare every sense of loftiness, pride, whatever it is, oh God. We lay them down. We embrace you. We embrace you. We embrace your ways. We embrace your, your dealings. We embrace your truth. We embrace your grace. We embrace your mercy. We embrace your love. Yes, of ourselves, we don't know how to love. We can't even love ourselves. The love we claim we have for ourselves is selfish, is fickle, is soulish. Teach us how to love. So we can love ourselves. So we can love you. We can love the people around us. Help us, oh God. We cast down every thought and imagination, every high thing that exalts themselves above your knowledge. We cast them down this morning. Yes, you say casting down imaginations, imaginations of lofty pride, arrogance, iniquity, pride. Yes, uh, lost, ungodliness, whatever it is, oh God, we cast them down. We say Christ alone be exalted in our life this morning. We yield our lives to you. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy, O oh God, that never fails. Thank you, Lord, for your truth, O oh God, that is a life. Yes, we live in the ambience of truth, living truth. You gave Moses living word, living word, not dead word. Thank you, Lord, that your word can be alive, can come alive in the heart of those who have, yes, pay close attention. You say, play. Pay close attention to these things. As we meditate on this word, we give life to that which has been spoken. Help us, O oh God, to keep our mind on the word, on the word, and the word became, and the word became flesh and dwell among men, and men beheld the glory as of the only begotten Son of the living God. May we, O oh God, give time, O oh God, and credence to your word that it may grow. They may come alive. Every seed sown comes alive. Every seed within the life of a seed, yes, is life. Within every seed is life. Help us, O oh God, that as we take in the seed of the word, that he may grow, that we may grow, O oh God, that your seed, O oh God, may produce life in us. We thank you this morning, O oh God, that the things of the Spirit requires time, requires commitment, requires consistency, requires determination. Yes, that we continue in it, that we continue. The things of the Spirit requires that we continue. The things of your Spirit requires requires that we daily we daily engage in it even we even when we don't feel like it that we have to do it oh god because that's part of the process of life so we thank you this morning that as we come this precious time oh god that we are we are we are we are spending is a is is a is a currency yes this time that we are spending oh god lord that it will yield dividends in days to come lord our prayer one day you will remember and you remember the the the, the offerings and the sacrifice Yes, you remember. You remember. Let this let this moment be a memorial, oh God, unto you. Let this minute, this hour, this precious 
period let it be a memorial that one day oh god these things that we have proclaimed and declare that we corporately say amen to oh god yes father we become and it came to pass we thank you this morning though we may not see the things happening within yes the environment of this proclamation and declaration but we know almighty god that our words are not empty words you said the words that i've spoken to you their spirit and their life you said in the days of samuel his word did not fall to the ground meaning every word that was proclaimed and declared came to pass yes that is that is one of the all mark the signet ring of the prophetic community that our words are life that that which we proclaim and pray and spoke oh god yes will return bringing forth fruit unto hundredfold we thank you this morning oh god we lay hold of the word of eternity and we declare it we speak it oh god over our realms over our lives over our family business home community we proclaim that it is well with our soul this morning we declare that it is well with our life this morning we proclaim this morning that christ is in us the hope of all glory we proclaim this morning that we rise up yes we engage this brand new day in victory we are not afraid for you have not given to us a spirit of fear but of love of power and of soundness of mind we hush every anxiety every fear every doubt in the name of jesus hush in the name of Jesus, we declare this morning, we bind our mind, our soul, our thoughts, our intelligence, our intellect, whatever it is, oh God, that causes us to make decisions. We bind it to Christ this morning. We say, rest in Christ, wait on the Lord. In the name of Jesus, as David spoke to his soul, why so don't cast all my soul? Put your trust in the Lord. We speak to our soul this morning and all the faculties. Now operate within the soul. Put your trust in the Lord. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my lawgiver. We put our trust in him this morning. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name. Be exalted, O oh God. Be lifted up. Be magnified. There's none like you. There's none to be compared with you. There's none to be equal with you. You're God all by yourself. And the most beautiful thing about you is that you are our Lord. But beyond that, you are our Father. And we love the way you father us. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba. Yes, you are the Abba in our life, our Father. You are the double-breasted one. You sustain us. You, 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 you nourish us that we may flourish Yes, in your garden. We bless you this morning. Glory and honor, praise be unto you. It is the call and the duty of man to lift up holy hands and give glory and praise to the one who reigns forever. Hallelujah. Praise be to you. Glory and honor, power, majesty be ascribed unto him who rides upon the wings of the wind. Who proclaim himself as Jah, one who lives in the lofty place, high above what the mind can comprehend. He is God, is our king. He spoke the stars into being. He spoke, yes, the universe into being. He fills all things. He is our king. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is Lord. He rules over all. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Welcome everyone this morning. Well, this is how we do it every morning. We just believe the Lord for great things. We believe God for great things, for great things. The Bible says for the expectations of the righteous will not be cut short, will not be cut off. We believe this morning that he who has begun a good work in us, in us, remember the work begins in us. All right. He who has begun a good work in us he is able, is never disabled. There is never a circumstance or situation or condition that will make God to be disabled. He is in charge. He has always been in charge. He will always be in charge. He has never abdicated, amen, his position of grace and power and love and provision, amen, to anyone. He has not abdicated that to anyone. So keep your eyes full. Focus on him this morning as we continue to journey further, hallelujah, into that glorious day, into that perfect day in Christ. May our life continue, amen, to show forth, to radiate his glory, amen. Whatever it is in your life, you can trust him with it.
Whatever you're desiring, whatever you're longing for, whatever you're seeking for, you can trust him this morning. I bet my life that you can put your trust in him. It will never fail you. Our problem is we don't understand the timings of God, all right? We don't understand the timings of God. So when we're expecting things, all right, and we set our, our mind on a particular time, on a particular, you know, season, and a particular way, and if it doesn't turn up in the way we expect, then we get disappointed. No, you see, and most times we blame God. We blame, no, 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 no. We, we should be blaming ourselves. We need to align to his, to his desire, to his design, to his timing, to his program. Yes, that's why we do all of these teachings. It's to help us to have a better understanding of his ways, you see. There's no way. I mean, sometimes I think about it. Just imagine a world without the word of God. Imagine the, word, the world amen, without those sent. All right, to teach us, to, to prep us, to build us, to, to tutor us in the ways of God. Imagine a world without true amen, servant priest, without true teaching priest. Just imagine that. It's going to be chaos. So we should learn to honor those that heaven, amen, has, has found and has put, amen, his word in their mouth. Because they help us to make decisions, amen, that are aligned to the will of God. They help us to discover, to find, amen, why we're here on earth. Somebody says, why am I on earth? Well, if you connect to, amen, those that God has given, amen, what it's called the blueprint of life, amen. If you, if you align yourself, amen, to the atmosphere, to the environment where, the truth, the Bible says, and mightily grew the word and prevail. What is the word growing in? <laughs> the word is growing in people. What is the word prevailing over? The word is prevailing, amen, over a people, over ideology, systems that have been built and established within lives, within society, within homes and family that are never aligned, amen, that are never designed to be there. So the word is prevailing. So as we come like this and gather before the Lord, the Lord, amen, uh, uh, his word rather is prevailing over the areas of our life yes we are becoming a better a better person in him there is nothing like a better you <laughs> uh, we are becoming better in him we're becoming it's in him that we discover who we are all right the more we discover him the more we discover ourselves the more we get to know him the more we get to know ourselves amen right? whatever you you you're seeking and you're trying to bring out they say the better you that is from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it will never bring you to your true identity your true identity identity and my true identity is locked up in a person until you gain entrance into christ you cannot discover who you are all right so finding life and finding the essence of existence and finding purpose amen is in the person is in the person the one who designed you amen he's the only one who has got amen your 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 your, your image your identity he knows your dna he knows what he designed you for he knows hallelujah what needs to be manifest at what season in your life that's why we wake up every day we engage him so he can reveal amen more of himself amen to us and the more we get to know him come on we the more we get to know Self and the more sighted we become, amen, regarding life. That's why we are able to talk about dealing with the spirit of the age. To deal with the spirit of the age is first, amen, to understand our position, amen, in the king of the age. Hallelujah. He's the king of the age. If we, if we, the Bible says, amen, a day is going to come as he begins to shake the world, shake everything that can be shaken. He said the desires of the nations. Yes, we are in that day. So as, as, as we continue to interact with this powerful spiritual you know truth heaven is bringing us to a position where we are becoming a man more more better more better humans we are becoming more more informed amen we have become more reformed we're becoming more transformed we're having more a more, more position of stability in the earth that within the shaking amen the bible says, for we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken that cannot be shaken hallelujah and that's the that's a beautiful thing amen that we know that we have a direction that we know where we're going that we're not just loafing around amen traversing the earth without a sense of direction that we're not just waking waking up more one morning go to work come back home you know do you know do family and just you know do whatever we're doing you understand and that, that's just the, you know you know crazy life cycle no that when we wake up we have a sense amen a, 
a sense of purpose in Christ Jesus that we are moving to us a place in him that everything that we do amen within the day amen are things that is advancing us amen into his divine counsel and intentions that's why amen is sevenfold spirit that's why wisdom amen is building his house within our lives yes wisdom has built a house wisdom has built a house I'm tracking that scripture as we begin to deal with the spirit of the age. Wisdom, amen, must build his house in us. Imagine that we are truly built, truly reformed, empowered, truly renovated, amen, via the spirit of wisdom. Just imagine the glory that we will radiate in the earth as, as the building of God. Whenever we talk about the building of God, we're talking about the place where, amen, the spirit of God, the counsels of God, amen, can, can flow unsolicited. We're talking about vessels that can be used, amen, to, 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 to express the economies of God in the earth. That's what we're talking about. It's a beautiful place. Hallelujah. So we've got to understand what the Lord is doing in this day there is nothing structural that god is building out there whatever god wants to build he's building it within the people that will go out there and build it out for him hallelujah so so the order is let the lord perfect his work in us amen let the lord continue to work in your heart amen to the degree amen of the structure to the degree of the depth of foundation you have amen is to amen the level that you're going to construct things for him out there when we try Try to construct things outside without amen the internal configuration of of the divine blueprint of god amen we miss god and we of course we miss misrepresent him and we misjudge him amen the scripture says in proverbs 19 i'm going to go back to genesis uh, uh 10 this morning because we have to start from genesis 10 that genesis 10 is where we are all right we're going to go to genesis 10 but let me just speak on this word while this is in my spirit the bible says uh, proverbs uh, uh, um proverbs 9 1 say wisdom has built a house i love it this is a scripture i've been tracking for over you know 18 years of my life thereabout wisdom has built wisdom hallelujah builds whatever you want to build you can't even begin to understand you see because when we say we have purpose we still need to build that purpose only wisdom amen has the capacity and the authority and the resource to allow us amen to build wisdom has built our house and i hope you understand that wisdom is not just some brain wave it's not an idea wisdom is not an idea let me show you <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Under Oboshianda. Let me show you something about wisdom. Because we need it in the days we're living. I'm not going to read all the scripture in Proverbs 8, but I just want to introduce you to wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. Wisdom, wisdom. <laughs> in fact, you need to read the entire 8. But, 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 but I'm not going to do that. Let me just pick it from, uh, let's pick it from verse 11. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can be compared with, with her. Nothing you desire can be compared with her. Now, when they say her, I want you to note that word her, all right, of course, as a feminine, feminine term, but that word, amen, connotes or reflects, amen, the function of wisdom. Listen to this. Wisdom is Christ. Wisdom is a person. Are you saying Christ is a, is a woman? No, no, no. Listen to this. All right. The, the work of wisdom, the work of wisdom, the function of wisdom, amen, is captured in the spirit of administration. It's captured in the spirit of stewardship. All right. Wisdom is the, ex, is the extension, is the stretch forth of the hand of God. Whenever God wants to build something, all right, he, he employs the ministry of wisdom. And we understand that, I mean, as the ministry of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one who testify of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you can't separate them. Wherever you find the Holy Spirit, you find Jesus. Wherever you find Jesus, you find the Holy Spirit. All right? They are two in one. They are one in two. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I tracked this so many years. The Lord opened my eyes. That's why you see, that, that's a, that, that's a signature, signature a ring of a signature, signature of, my, of my, most of my statement. You see, the wisdom builds a house. Wisdom speaks, yes, because I had to catch the revelation of this thing. That's why sometimes when I do things, it's a bit different from others. No, I'm tracking, I'm following, amen, the path of wisdom. When you build, when you follow wisdom, you will not go wrong. Hmm. 
It says there's nothing to be that you can desire that can be compared with her. Listen to this. Wisdom dwells together with prudence. Wherever you have wisdom, you find prudence there. Yes. It says, listen to this. Listen to this. It says, I possess knowledge and discretion. Uh, did you see now that uh, the term has changed? Now, wisdom is speaking. He said, I possess. It's become a personal thing. I possess. So, when we say wisdom is a person, you need to understand this. He said, I possess knowledge and discretion. He says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride. Now, wisdom is speaking. <laughs> I hate pride. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. Wisdom begin to speak. Wisdom is speaking. I'm speaking about how to deal with the spirit of the age. Because that is, when we're dealing with the spirit of the age, remember we're dealing with two kinds of wisdom. Yes. We're dealing with two kinds of ideology. We're dealing with two kinds of culture. We're dealing with two kinds of knowledge. We're dealing with two kinds of belief system. Yes. We're dealing with all right, two, 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 two society living in one order of life. Yes. We have to know where we are. Mm. Where is it? He said, I possess knowledge. I, I possess. Wisdom possess knowledge. So when you pray in the morning, Lord, may wisdom possess me that I may have knowledge. Because when you're seeking for knowledge <laughs> and you have not, you've not come via wisdom, you don't have it. You'll be having something else. It says, it says I, I wisdom dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate. He said, if you, if you say you fear the Lord, you must hate evil. All right, you must you must hate injustice. He says, I hate pride and arrogance and evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment am I. Verse uh, 14. I have understanding. I have understanding. <laughs> Can you see? Wisdom, wisdom is taking all those dimensions that we're reading. When we say the seven spirits amen, of the law, when we say the seven order of God, uh, all of those things that we read in, in Isaiah 11, all right, the spirit of, of, of wisdom and counsel. You've got to understand that all of that dwell in one dimension called wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Alabashiam, though. Fill us, Lord, with wisdom. It's a counsel. Where is it? It's a counsel and sound judgment am I. I have understanding and power. It's a by me, kings, by me, kings reign. You want to be a king in this day. You want to reign on the earth. We are kings in the earth. You want to reign. Without wisdom, you cannot reign. All right? It's a by me, kings, kings reign. And rulers make laws that are just. You see why people are making unjust laws? Because they don't possess wisdom. To possess wisdom is to possess the spirit of God. Hallelujah. By me, prince, govern, and all nobles rule in the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With, <clears throat> with me are riches and honor, enduring wealth, and what? Prosperity. You see, that's the order. With me. So, if you don't have wisdom and you're seeking these things, uh, wealth and prosperity, you're seeking something in vain. My fruit is better than fine gold. <clears throat> My fruit is better than fine, fine gold. And uh, what, what, what I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the ways of righteousness along the path of justice, bestowing wealth on those who love me. And making their treasures full. Verse 22. The, listen to this now. Our, it, wisdom wants to introduce himself. It says, The Lord wrought me forth. The Lord wrought me forth. As the first of his works. <laughs> Check the scripture out. Proverbs 9.22 the Lord wrought, brought me for wrought me forth as the first. He said, what did, what did God ever create first? Before, before Adam was born, before eons and creation, wisdom was brought forth. You want to succeed? You want to excel? You want to advance in the days that we live in? Nothing happens to you. If you come into contact with this truth, I'm telling you, you will excel. Because wisdom is the one that will define to you what, what it means to succeed and what it means to excel in life. Are you getting the point? He said, the Lord wrought me forth as the first, as the 
first, first in order, first, first in 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 in, in mention, first in priority. The Lord, the Lord wrought me, me first as the first of his work. Before his deeds of old, I was appointed from eternity, from the beginning, before the world began. <laughs> what, what beginning is wisdom speaking about? In the beginning of God, when there was no ocean, I was given birth. When there is no spring abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the earth or its field, before he made the earth or its field or any of the dust of the world, I was there when he set heaven in place. I rest my case. I was there. Did you see that wisdom is speaking as a person? I was there when he set the heaven in place. He didn't say the heavens. The heaven. You see, because if we're going to deal with the spirit of the age, we have to understand the God of the age. We have to understand the God of eternity. We have to understand his place, his position. Now, all of this basically lays foundation to us as we begin to look into, amen, some important principles, amen, as we, as we advance, all right, in this season in time. Let's, let's, let's look at some things here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 10. All right, Genesis chapter 10. Remember, we've dealt with, you know, Genesis chapter 8. We've dealt with Genesis chapter 9. What are we doing? We are tracking, amen, the beginnings. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're tracking the beginnings of God or the, 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 the kickstart, the restart, like we have said some time back, the reset, amen, of the orders of God in the earth. How God moves, how God establishes his counsel, how God, amen, you know, interacts within the beginning, amen, of a generation or within the structure of what is called, amen, the nearness of his kingdom. Remember that the things of God, amen, are transitional. The things of God, our walk with God is transitional. Amen. From, from, the, from the fall of man in the garden, all right? All of the activities of God in the earth is redemptive, amen, by design and by, you know, by, by intent. All of everything that God did, amen, with all the people he did from, from the period that Adam fell. Remember that word when God died brought a judgment, amen, upon, upon man, amen, and, you know, uh, uh, and of course the serpent, a, a prophetic word went forth, amen, he will bruise your head, you he will bruise his heel, that, that phrase captures the redemptive program of God in the earth, so we are within the redemptive structures of God, hallelujah, so all of the things that the Lord has been doing, all of the people that, amen, he has awoken, he has spoken to, amen, is it, you know, uh, uh, Noah, amen, is it uh, Enoch, is it Enos, you know, is it all of those people, Abraham, Elijah, you must track his redemptive program, all right, don't just look at how powerful, amen, this prophet was, that man, how he spoke, no, they all spoke within the context of, amen, the redemptive program of God, that is very important, because that must give us a direction and a directive to how, amen, we connect and we, 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 we build in our journey with God. God is redeeming the earth. The Bible says creation is groaning even until this very minute, this very hour. Redemption, amen, excuse me, creation is growing, groaning for redemption, amen. We are those who are carriers of the spirit of the son of God, yes. Redemption is waiting for the manifestation. So every time there is a manifestation of the Son of God within any sphere of human life, what takes place is redemption. Redemption goes amen, into effect. So we have to redeem the world, amen, of, of science, the world of business. The, the, you know, we have to redeem, once again, the world of, you know, of, of relationship, our society in terms of homes, family, all of that. We have to bring the power of God, redemption into that area, amen, because everything has collapsed. Everything cascaded when Adam fell. You say, but what about what Jesus did? Yes, Jesus Christ came, amen, restored the order, amen. But guess what? We have to take delivery of that to which Jesus has done, amen, the 
fact that Jesus has redeemed the earth and has given us power, amen, he sent us into the world. Isn't that what he said? He said, go into the world. The path that I have given to you, the authority that I have wrought, <coughs> excuse me, the authority that I've wrought, I now give it to you. Go in the world, amen, and reculture the world. He said, go and disciple the world. But the problem is, many of us, we're not ready and not prepared for this work. So all that we are seeing, we are in, from Genesis, we're tracking a pattern. We're tracking, amen, how people live life, all right? You see the way people live their life during the days of Noah, because that's the key scripture that we are looking at, all right? Remember, the days of Noah goes beyond just the day of Noah. The day of Noah had, has become a pattern of operation. All right, has become a pattern of operation for us. And as we get to understand what that is, as the days, Bible says, as it were in the days of Noah. So the day of Noah, amen, shows us a kind of activity in the earth that depicts what we are going to be seeing manifest, amen, in the, in the days of the end. The Bible says Jude spoke, amen, regarding the days of, of, of Enoch when he walked the earth. Jude, Jude, yes, he spoke of that. And, and all, of the th all of the things that we have seen, the kind of spirit that operated, the kind of lifestyle, the kind of interactions, the kind of relationship, because that is the key thing, all right, that we are looking into that we can, we can connect what happened in the days of now to the days that we live in, all right, is the level, is the kind of, you know, perverted, you know, perverted relationship that men are going going into. The Bible says, as it were in the days of Noah, men were giving themselves to marriage, amen, and, 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 and into all kinds of relationship. And the Lord spoke to me that that word marriage is not just about, you know, a man and a woman marrying themselves, amen. And of course, we know that men and men are marrying themselves today. But beyond that, people are going into alliances with the powers of darkness. They are giving themselves, they are going into covenant with with powerful ungodly spirits. That what giving themselves in marriage, all right, is, is going into alliances, going into, you know, you know, spheres that are contrary to, you know, the, the values and the standards of God and, and, and bringing forth things based, amen, on, on, on the wrong, you know, foundation. And that's something that we have to very, we have to, excuse me, we have to look into and be very, very, amen, careful that we don't allow ourselves, amen, that when we're going into any kind of, you know, uh, 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 <clears throat> agreement or relationship that we understand that is why the lord you know warned his children amen the children of israel he said don't marry the gentiles don't marry from the foreigners all right because they will they will do what they will corrupt you they will pollute you amen they will cause you to do things of course we know that was what happened to solomon and the and the, and the entire you know children of israel all right uh, when when King Ahab, or who was you know, a, a, a Jew, got married to you know Jezebel from a different land, from the land of the you know you know the the the, the Seraphonians, or right? the Saldonians. When when he got married to her, what was she? She came with her God. She came with the high places. And that's how, amen, the, the beginning of the downfall of the, of the people of God, amen, you know, was, was cemented. So we have to understand that when they say, as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days. So in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, amen, we're going to be seeing people going into all kinds of ungodly alliances, all kinds of, you know, mergers and acquisitions, all kinds of, you know, con you know, you know connections, all, right? all kinds of networkings. We, we have to be very careful. Amen. That we don't yield ourselves. And of course, beyond just, you know, dealing with all of these from an organizational point, we have to also look at it from even relational point. All right. Who are your friends? Who do you connect? What kind of a spirit do they carry? Because listen to this. The people that you connect with, the people that you connect with, to a certain degree, they will influence you. They will influence your, your beliefs. They will influence. If you can't influence people, they will influence you. All right. That's the pattern. And that's why every every parent must learn to teach their children, amen, to know how to influence, all right, their peers, to know how to influence. Because listen to this, if you don't train, if you don't teach your children to know how to influence their, their peers, their peers will influence them. That's just it. That's what makes the world go crazy. All right. We all are product of influence. All right. Somebody somewhere influence you. Many of the things. All right. Uh, you you would notice. You know your your children watch certain program on the on the on you know on the telly. You know after a few days they, they start using the same terminology, the same language. Yes, that's influence. You know we get to be influenced every day. 
So we have to have insight. You know, I really want to make this a bit practical and, 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 and you know, directive so that we don't, you know, be just building some pie, you know, you know, in the pie in the sky. We have to have a clear understanding that we live in a day of influence, true wrong rela relationship, amen. What you agree with, amen, who you agree with, amen, will define, hallelujah, how far you are going to, how, how far you're going to go. So we want to understand that as the Spirit of the Lord, amen, begins to speak to us uh, in terms of the environment that we have been brought into, we want to we want our spirit to be informed, to be reformed, to be transformed, to be empowered, hallelujah, in the spirit of redemption, all right? That's why it's very difficult for people to influence me. No, very difficult, very difficult. Once I know something that is not right or it doesn't speak to, you know, the, the, the values of God, I don't care how that thing looks or sound. I, I, I just reject it. Mm -mm, sorry. This, you can't change my mind. Because my values are sourced from the standard of God's word. You've got to be able to define. All right, listen, there are two value systems in the world. <clears throat> no matter how the thing looks, there are two value systems. One, amen, is God's value. The other, amen, of course, is the devil's value. No matter how it's painted. All right, yes, we've got to understand that our life, as we begin to press into the days of the end, will amen be enhanced by the choices we make by the connections by the relationship amen and of course our life amen will, will, will cascade will fall amen will will will, 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 will go the, down the path amen of of darkness via the connections and the wrong relationship does that mean that we should no longer interact with the people of the world absolutely not what i'm saying is we should be able to have amen a, a strong value system all right that when when they say come let's go down <laughs> remember <laughs> It was Solomon who said, "My son, if 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 they say, come join us, all right? Uh, let, let's 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 put our resources together and do something, you know, something something evil." He said, "Sorry, I don't want to be part of that." He said, "Don't listen to them, my son. We have to develop that character. We have to understand. We have to be awakened to the environment, to the character, to the nature, amen, of the days, the days, the days that we live in. Everything that is looking so nice and looking so attractive and looking so wonderful. We have to know the spirit behind them. All right, to, to, to know the spirit of the age, you must be able to open the curtain, amen, and see what is behind that beautiful presentation, that nice, you know, uh, well looking, uh, 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 you know, idea. You must understand, or else the enemy is going to use the issue of sampling things without discerning them, amen, to catch you. So, we see how, amen, uh, uh, Noah in Genesis 9, you know, you know, made a mistake. What a powerful man. He made a mistake. Well, he made that mistake. It's for us not to repeat the mistake, right? All right. So in chapter 10, we begin to see, all right, now, of course, uh, 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 the, the world is getting populated. So that's the beginning of chapter 10. The Bible says, this is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's sons, who themselves had sons after the flood. And of course, the scripture began to you know, list the, the names of these sons who, of course, began the, a, a new generation. Remember that what I'm dealing with, friends, listen to this, and I want us to pick this very important, very important. What we're dealing with here, amen, is not just amen, a genealogy. We're not just dealing with the genealogy of the sons of Noah, amen, or Noah and his sons. We're dealing with a spiritual genealogy because now we are positioning ourselves from the dimension of Christ. Remember that our life began, amen, in Christ. Our life began, our life has always been in Christ. Something happened, amen, that brought sin into our life. Christ came to redeem, to redeem that, all right? But there is something that, you know, still connects to us in terms of, you know, our position in the earth. We live in the earth. So there are still certain values, structures that we need to understand why people behave in certain ways, all right? Okay, because we are all, you know, inheritors of you know, certain beliefs, you know, ideas, you know, values from our forefathers, parents, you know, things that are not aligned to the will of God. He said, but hasn't that been settled in Christ Jesus? Yes, that's been, that's been settled in Christ Jesus. If we understand what has been settled and if we're walking, amen, in what has been settled. Because listen to this, the fact that Christ did something does not mean that automatically those things begins to work in our life. No, 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 no. The things of the Spirit don't work like that. You have to take delivery of it. 
You have to take delivery of it. Amen. The Bible says we've been blessed. Amen. In, 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 in without spiritual blessing in heavenly places, you have to go to the spiritual realm and take down, or else the powers of darkness will contend with you. Yes, they will contend with you. They contend, amen. You know, with the body of Moses. For the body of Moses, they, 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 there are positions, there are powers, there are principalities, amen, that have been positioned. Like I said parts of darkness that operated in the days of Noah, all right, that operated amen, through the Old Testament. Guess what? They are still there. They, they never die. You, do, you don't kill demons. You, can't, you don't kill spirit, amen. You may, you may dislodge them, amen. You may, you may move them. You may cast them from, where, from a location, amen. But guess what? They find somewhere else. <laughs> you understand? So if, if you create an environment for them to function, they will function. Now that's the point that I'm making. We don't want to create an environment within our own life, within our own space that allow, amen, satanic imposition, that allows certain spirit. The Bible says when the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, amen, they came into them. They, take, they took them for marriage, all right? Why? Because, you know, the men that were alive, that were around back in those days, allowed them, permitted them. Powers of darkness, works of the enemy do not have the authority to to impose themselves, amen, on humans, except humans are deceived, amen, and uh, ignorantly open the door. You see, in the things of the spirit, there are there are portals, there are gateways. All right, I, I understand that, and of course, that's the reason why the name of our ministry is called uh, the Potter's Gate. All right, you have to open. You have to open, amen, yourself in the spirit. You have to open your home, your family. You have to open a city, a nation, amen, for certain spirit to, to operate, all right? There are certain spirit that we have opened up, all right, in our city, in our nation, all right, that have allowed certain devil spirits, amen, who have become powerful system to operate. So what we want to do is to understand those principles, amen, and to see how we can shut them via the power amen of the new covenant they are the power of the new life we have in jesus christ this is the idea of spiritual warfare so if we say we're dealing with the spirit of the age we have to understand which spirit we're dealing with we have to understand their their modality we have to understand their operation we have to understand their character and their nature all right all of this can be effectively done via the revelation of christ via the position of truth in our life via our partnership with the holy spirit amen or else we'll be fighting you know things that we have we have no knowledge of ignorance <laughs> my people still perish for lack of knowledge the reason why darkness amen are still covering and pervading you know our places in the earth in our society in our community is because all right we do not have informed powerful informed believers who can take their place in the spirit amen and begin to activate certain spiritual authority and power amen governmental position amen that allow them to begin to occupy space in the natural realm we have to understand this. If we don't understand this, we'll just be praying and our prayer is going nowhere. Or we're praying, but we are not making you know, impact because we lack knowledge. We lack understanding. We don't want to, amen, live in a state of darkness, amen, and, 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 and ignorance in this last day. One of the things that will allow us to advance and to succeed in the last day is light, amen, and that light comes from Christ. Jesus is the light of the world, amen. The Bible says, he who walk with me will not walk in darkness. The more we walk in, we walk in the light, the more we have the life of God and we walk in his light, the more we are able to what? Expose darkness because that's that's what light does. D light exposes darkness. How the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of, the, of, of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about. Did you see that when we were reading Proverbs 9, you know, uh, 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 um, wisdom said, power dwells with me. Power dwells with me. So uh, as you walk in the nature of Christ and you allow his spirit to lead you, to guide you, amen, what begins to happen is you have what I call the power of attorney, the power of execution, amen. You, you, you exercise, amen, the dominion, the authority, the power that has been given to you via, amen, the understanding that you have come to, amen, and S in, in your walk with God. Because if you don't walk with God, of course, you, you don't know anything. And that means that the devil continues to rule. So how to defeat, amen, the path of darkness in this last day, amen, via all the systems that have been set in place that are compelling us to bow the knees are the things that we want to deal with. Because that's what it means when we say we're dealing with the spirit of the age. There is an age that we are in that is operating via, amen, an ancient spirit. 
All right, there are powerful satanic spirits that have been awakened, like I said before, and they are being given a body, they are being given a house, they are being given a place to live, they are being given a voice to speak. Yes, but if we will say no, we are not going to allow that in our space, in our home, in our family, amen, in our community, amen. And of course, they go somewhere else, and we can begin to take, you know, take charge over the realms that heaven has given to us. One shall put a fall a thousand, two shall put a fall ten thousand. So imagine the power of two that have clear prophetic understanding of the governmental apostolic position that God has given to us in the earth. Just imagine two. Two shall put to, to fly ten thousand. So we have to have this clear spiritual understanding as we engage. Amen. When we, when we talk about some of these things that we're looking at in the scripture, we're not just dealing with humans. Now we're dealing with the spirit. We're dealing with, amen, the spirit behind them. So, so in, in Genesis chapter 10, I'm trying to give us, you know, a, you know, kind of a broad insight and understanding all right, of what we're dealing with so that you can know how to pray. You know how to affect your spiritual authority. You know how to affect your position. All right. You're not deceived. You're not, you're not, you're not just doing hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Jesus is Lord. No, you know what you're engaging with. Amen. You know what you're dealing with amen you are informed you know that we are in the day amen where there are clashes in the spirit there is warfare in the spirit amen you know that amen this is not just hallelujah no no you are informed amen of what is going on around you all right because listen when the enemy start attacking you he start touching things he start touching people that are close to you he start touching things that are near to you yes that's what he said we understand that <laughs> in the attack of job you understand he cannot attack the spirit of job so he began to attack the things that are close to job that's what happened he will attack your wife will attack your husband <laughs> you know he said the, 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 the wife said curse god and die that was the devil the devil will use anything Amen. That is available, particularly if those things are close to us. That's why we have to have sight in the days we live in. All right. You're getting yourself angry. You f begin to get depressed. You know, all of these things. That's the that's the enemy trying to get into get into your core amen get into your spirit so we have to understand that our battle is not flesh and blood amen but most time the battle will pan out in flesh and blood so if you don't have sight that you know that 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 attitude that person is showing to you is a way of trying to get into your spirit that you know a thing that happened that you know situation that condition is because listen to this if the enemy can get into your soul it's only a matter of time amen before he weakens you then you start feeling you know prayerlessness powerlessness you know you start feeling tired you start feeling oh, i don't know what's going on with me and you know you just think well it's all circumstance no circumstance are part of the program of of satan he uses circumstance he uses event amen to try to get into the core to try to get into your house to try to get yes while men were sleeping all right when if you leave the door open the enemy is gonna come in Amen. If you leave the gate open, he's going to sneak in. If you leave the window open, he's going to sneak in. I'm talking about dealing with the spirit of the age. You understand? All of this will give us a kind of a spiritual template and understanding. All right? So, so that's why you've got to arm yourself, amen, with truth, with light. You have to walk in the spirit of joy. You have to walk in the spirit, amen, of grace. The more, the Bible says, darkness will cover the earth, amen. Iniquity will abound, amen. But where there is iniquity abounding, the Bible says, grace abounds the more. What is grace? The capacity, amen, to handle. The capacity to handle whatever the enemy is throwing at you. At, at you. All right, so this is important as we deal with uh, 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 um, Genesis. In fact, maybe I should just read Genesis chapter 10 to give you, if that's all I'm going to do in the next few minutes, let me do that, all right? Because that will give you a foundation of what we're going to be dealing with, all right? We're going to be dealing with construction, building. You know, of course, when we talk about building, we're talking about building our life, building our home, family, building our business, and all of that. But we don't want to build with the wrong values. We don't want to build, amen, with the wrong template. We don't want to build, amen, from the order of Cush, from the order of Nimrod, all right? All right, so this is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's son, who themselves had sons after the flood <clears throat> now they're introducing to us uh uh japheth that's the sons of japheth the sons of Japh. <clears throat> excuse me the sons of japheth are goma magog amen madai javan tabal mashek and teras the sons of goma ashkazia safania and tugar uh, tugara tugama the sons of 
uh, Japhan. All of these are just the clan of Japhet. The sons of uh, Javan. <clears throat> you see how the world begins to populate. Eliasha, uh, uh, Tashashi, the, the, the Canaanites, and the Rodanites. From this, the from this, the maritime people, <laughs> the maritime people, the water people, <clears throat> people who start building, uh, you know, uh, uh, marines and start dealing with uh, 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 economic sea, sea of economy. All right. Yeah, 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 there now. The Bible says these are the, mar the, the maritime people spread out into their territory by their clans within their nations, each with his own language, each with his own language. Then, the, then you have the Amites, the sons of Ham, the, that's the, the second son of Noah now, the sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put and Cain. Now, of course, this seems to be Africa now. <clears throat> All right, the sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Cain, and Cain, excuse me, and Cana. The sons of Cush, uh, uh, Sheba, Avalea, Shabbat, Ramah, and Sh uh, Sabkia. The sons of Ramah, Sheba, and, and Dedan. Now, verse 8 says, Cush was the father of Nimrod. I want us to know this because now the scripture <clears throat> begins to focus on one individual. Of course, because that becomes the key point, all right, or the gateway, the entry point of a generation. The Bible says, Cush was the father of Nimrod, <clears throat> who became a mighty hunter on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That's very important. A mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. All right? So his name becomes a proverber. Pro pro proverbial. The first center of his kingdom were Babel, Babylon. All right? The first, listen to this, the first center of his kingdom was Babylon, Uruk, Akkad, and Kalea in Sinai. From, from that land, all right, he went to Assyria, where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Rehoboth Har, Kamal, you know, Kalma, and Raisin, <clears throat> which is between Nineveh and Kala, which is the great city. So we begin to see something here. And of course, if you begin to read further, you begin to understand the nature of, of Nimrod. Bible says <clears throat> Nimrod was... Excuse me. <clears throat> the Bible says Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord, but beyond just being a hunter. So we see two things. Now we pick something in uh, in verse verse, uh, verse 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 four regarding the sons of Japhet. The Bible says they were maritime people. So you you you, you get to understand all right the the, the nature of how these people. Uh, uh, live life, their livelihood, of course, is true marine. Now we're seeing something, a, another thing appearing here, okay? So I want you to pick that, all right? The first job we see of man is farming. The next job we're seeing here, basically, is, you know, a, a, a marine life. Now, the Bible now begins to show us something about Cush, who is the father of, of Nimrod. And the reason why we're looking at Nimrod is because later on, we're going to see that Nimrod, amen, was a city builder. And the first city that he built was what? Babylon. Babel. And of course, we understand that that word Babel means rebellion. Rebellion against so Because it's not just enough to say rebellion. It's, I mean, we've got to understand what are you rebelling against. <laughs> Nimrod built something that rebelled against the order of God. It, in fact, it's from there that, you know, uh, uh, Psalm 2 all right, was inspired when the Bible says the kings of the earth rebel against God. It's that same spirit. It's that same spirit that walked in Nimrod, amen, that began to walk in the heart of the kings of the earth where they said we are no longer going to follow the order, the pattern, the ways of God. No, we will rebel against God and against his anointing. All right, we will break his chain, so-called chain, meaning that, amen, God's, God's you, know, uh, 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 you know, restraining power upon man. The, the, the restraining order of, of God upon man to say, you know, you, know, you cannot do that. This is where, all right, this is the order of life. This is how things must be done. They say, no, we don't want that. We're going to break that. Okay. So the Bible says, Cush was the father of Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter. 
And like I said this before, that this word mighty hunter, if you begin to probe deep into what this means, this is not just about killing you know venison this is not just about you know hunting for for deer and you know and for rabbits and all of that no but beyond this it's also a reflection amen of the spirit of the character amen of the the the, the, the identity if you will amen of nimrod of of kush in terms of being you know exerting his position of power amen upon things upon people upon you know uh, 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 realms and all of that so the bible said kush was was the father of nimrod who became a mighty warrior on the earth okay he was a mighty hunter okay so you're seeing something now this is this is a guy who lived his life based on war fight all right and to overcome and all of that but beyond that the bible said he was a mighty hunter he knew how to hunt things you're just hunting, you know, uh, uh, you know, animals. But you also know how to hunt things, you know. But beyond that, he also began, amen, the concept of building things. So you begin to understand the character of this order of 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 of, of tribe. Now we 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 are dealing with this because I want us to understand some of the spirit that we're going to be dealing with in the last day of course by now we know that this is these are all spirit that have been well established if you talk about maritime spirit i mean me people are building things building ships all of that all right but beyond that please let's not just limit this to what people build physically all right it's also a condition of you know people's ideology of thinking and building and all of that so uh, I, <laughs> That's just something I want us to, you know, to, to put in mind. So I don't want our mind to be limited to just being able to construct things. First of all, this spirit comes from that which we, we you know, we, we tend to see him and believe from the inside of us. Okay. So the Bible says the first center of his kingdom were Babylon. So this guy is going and establishing, you know, kingdoms and he's building cities, he's building things, he's putting, organizing things. This guy has the ability, capacity to organize, to bring people together and say, we're going to settle here, we're going to build city, we're going to build X, Y, Z. And that was good. If, if the idea, amen, is not to rebel against God, the heart of Nimrod is the fact that, amen, he was... He was he was a mighty hunter before God. Amen. In fact, I mean, he hunted to the point that that drew the attention of God. The way this guy is hunting things. But beyond that, the scripture said, all right, that he was a mighty builder. He was a mighty warrior. All right. And of course, the first the first city he built was Babel. All right. And this is where we are going to, all right, uh, uh, begin to kind of take our 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 track in advancing to us engaging the spirit of the age because as we look at this i'm believing the lord that we'll be able to pick some important principles that will help us to know how to build because like i said there are two systems in the earth all right there is this system of nimrod that is building and beyond nimrod all right there are other systems too that are there in the earth that people live their life outside the order outside the standard outside the pattern of god when we want to build we have to build via the nature via the pattern we have to go via what we, we read in proverbs 9 wisdom builds a house so how does wisdom build all right what has what what has nimrod done in his structure that made god come down to look at what he built and scattered it all right yet the lord has called us to build up so what is it that we are going to amen know or understand in the building of the order of god that allow our life amen to become accepted that allow what we build to become accepted in the in the sight of god i think that is something that i would like us to really uh, examine and hopefully we'll do that by the grace of god maybe tomorrow or next time we meet father we want to bless your name this morning we give you glory these are days, interesting days before us. And some of these things that we've talked about may sound a bit technical to some people, but they are important things that we need to know. They are necessary for us to understand spirits. Spirits are not, are not known, are not defined by the longevity of time. The spirit can be in a place, in a home, family, for, for decades, centuries. Yes. Until somebody rises up and locate and begin to deal with that spirit and say, you can no longer be here. 
until somebody with spiritual authority rises up and counter that spirit and expel it. So, Father Lord, we take our place even as we begin to engage a new day. As we see the nearness of your kingdom, we want to be well clothed. We want to be well prepared. We want to be ready. We want to be informed. We want to be reformed and transformed. We don't want our, our concept of engaging your word to be interfered by the ideologies of religion. No. We make no apology to the things that we speak about and to the things that your spirit is revealing to us. So we rise up this morning and we say in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant us inroad entrance into your God. The wisdom that will allow us to see the things that others never saw. To see the things of God that seem dark, oh God. We want to understand your ways. We want to rise up in the power of your spirit. We want to go forth, oh God, bringing your counsel into manifestation. Thank you, Father, for my brethren this morning as they took this time to listen, to hear. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will grant them insight, understanding, revelation, counsel, but also grant them the enablement, oh God, to remember these things even as they pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that as you're building a new house, you're building a new home, you're building a new order within our life via, yes, the priesthood of Melchizedek. Help us, Father, to rise up in spirit and position ourselves in light. That your name, O oh God, once again may be glorified. That the knowledge of your glory may cover the earth, even as the water covers the sea. We honor you. We glorify your name. May your kingdom come, Lord, as we go out this morning, wherever we are going, whatever we are engaging with, whatever we are going to be dealing with today, I pray, Father, for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and I pray for your favor. Bless your people, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, for the lives of our people. Thank you for the life of our nation. We take up stand, O oh God, and we proclaim your glory and your power, your, your authority, O oh God, yes, to fill this nation. Let your authority bring down everything that is contrary, yes, to your will, to your counsel. We pray in the name of Jesus that righteousness will prevail in this nation. Every spirit of Dagon, every spirit of the high places, yes, that has been positioned, and that men are feeding daily, O oh God, that is empowering that ungodly spirit. Father, this day we proclaim, we bring them down as we exalt you, as we extol you in the land. We thank you. We bless your name. We glorify you. We see your righteousness once again. Yes, pervading this land, O oh God, sweeping through this nation. We see your glory covering, yes, this nation. We bless you. We bless your name, O oh God. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we have come to the end of today's live broadcast. Thank you, everyone, for connecting with me this morning. I want to believe the Lord that the Spirit of God, amen, has dropped something in your heart, amen, something you can pray with, something you maybe has given you another level of insight, amen. And if there's something that you didn't get right, well, or maybe you didn't pick up while I was talking, you can ask the Lord to give you a better understanding, amen. We are learning. We are all learning together. We want to have in a position where we are well informed, we are well positioned. Remember, one of the ways to counter the spirit of the age is to do the opposite. Is to do the opposite. All right. So let's make it, amen, a duty. Let's make it our responsibility that we are going to live, amen, from the life of the spirit. We are going to flow, amen, from the inside out life, amen. We're going to walk in joy. Whatever comes from the inside of you must be righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, amen. Whatever must come out of you must bring glory and pleasure to God. Let's not just live for, you know, the, the, the opinions of men. Let's live for his glory so that what will come out of us will be that which glorify the Lord. So bless you everyone this morning for joining. Thank you everyone everyone thank you for connecting thank you sister tina sister sister myrtle all right uh, sister uh, um sister Dioni, all right of course brother 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 mervyn amen my wife and uh, i see sister um Stan Kumisa, all right. These are the names that are, excuse me, those are the faces I can see before me, all right. And of course, I can't flip, I can't change anything here. 
All right. But thank you, everyone, for connecting this morning. Really appreciate it. God bless you. And all those other people that are connecting that I, I didn't see them. All right. Red Derek uh, and Wells again. Please, thank you, everyone. God bless everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. I should be able to do another session of the school, hopefully today, maybe between 10 and 11, hopefully, if I have all right, the time, if the time permits me. We're having an issue with the time of the school, but we'll see how it works out. Thank you. Have a blessed, wonderful uh, Friday. God bless you all. Bye-bye.